center of the universe and the Thrive15.com World Headquarters. Let's go! Presenting the world's only business school without the BS with optometrist and entrepreneur Dr. Robert Selner and the Forest Small Business Administration Entrepreneur of the Year in your ear, Clay Clark. It's the Thrive Time Show on Talk Radio 1170. Three, two, one. All right, Thrive Nation, welcome back to the Thrive Time Show. For those of you just tuning in for the first time, for those of you who've just discovered this program, you might be asking yourself, what is this show? Well, this show is the dojo of mojo, where many people go to learn how to start and grow a successful business. My name is Clay Clark. I'm the former SBA Entrepreneur of the Year uh, in your ear today. And as always, I'm typically joined here with Dr. Robert Zellner, but he is not here today because we are joined with a super guest, Miss Shannon Wilburn, the founder of Just Between Friends Franchise Systems. You're listening to The Thrive Time Show on Talk Radio 1170. Uh, many, many locations throughout the country. It's Shannon Wilburn. Shannon, how are you? I am doing great. I'm kind of sad that Dr. Z's not here, too. Yeah, well, you know, he, he, the thing is, he's an international man of mystery. He's, he's He goes up. <laughs> th- this is his last week's schedule. He actually went to Guatemala for the birth of his uh, uh, grandson. Then he wow. went up to Minneapolis to go watch a Vikings game, and then he went to Vegas for something. So this is what he. This is a normal week. He gets around. He gets around, and so. <laughs> but for anybody who's just now uh, familiarizing themselves, maybe they've heard your name before, but they don't really know what it is that you do at Just Between Friends. Can you kind of explain what Just Between Friends is? Yeah. So um, I kind of explain it like a children's and maternity consignment sales event or a pop-up consignment event. So we don't have storefront locations. Oh, really? Our franchise owners are basically event planners. So they plan two events per year and convince families. Kind of our core demographic is families with children ages zero to five because they have all the stuff that they need to get rid of. Yeah. Wink, wink. Now, let me ask you this here. When did you when did you realize, because a lot of people are listening, and they're going, I want to start my own business someday. And now Shannon, you know, she's on the other side of things. She's actually built something. When did you realize that your idea could actually become a thing? When your idea could actually become a viable business? At what point, when was the idea, where you, when was that moment where you said, this could actually be a real business? Um, well, I I. From the very beginning, when after we had our first event in our living room and people were like, when are you doing this event again? Uh Oh, I was like, "Okay, well, they like this. I guess we're going to do this again. And I talked to my business partner at the time and I was like, do you want to do this again? And she was like, sure. And so that's really how we started it. Um, And because I'm more of an accidental entrepreneur and this wasn't on purpose. Really? You're an accidental entrepreneur? Oh, yeah, totally. Really? My elementary education degree didn't teach me anything about business. Wow. <laughs> so, therefore, I made lots and lots of mistakes and still make lots and lots of mistakes. But I'm thankful for people like you who can uh, tell us what to do. Well, I, I was uh, researching you. And one thing that's kind of fun about you and the success of your business is that you have actually helped donate more than $15 million of cash and in-kind donations as a result or kind of a byproduct of your business. Correct. Can you explain to the Thrivers how you've been able to do that or what, what, sure. what, what your process was for doing that? So we have over 150 locations in North America, and we say we're international because we have one franchise in Canada. Oh. Oh, you betcha. Hey, we Bjorn. Get to, we get to count it for sure. Well, there we go. <laughs> but all of our franchises partner with a local charity, so a local nonprofit. And it can be anything from a foster care organization to someone helping um, kids who are homeless. I mean, it can be anything. But our uh, franchise owners are able to donate through the generosity of their consigners unsold items wow so like if you participated in one of our events and you had you know a fifth of your items that didn't sell Mm. then you could you can choose to donate those items at the end of the event and they get to go to the charity partner well and i know we don't have a live studio audience to sit there and and cheer for you (laughs) and i know you're not gonna hype yourself but i'm gonna say 15 million dollars you've raised that's exciting that deserves that deserves a round of applause and i'm gonna i'm gonna clap right back to the families that have participated in our events over the last few years because it's not it's not shannon wilburn giving 15 million dollars it's not our franchisees giving 15 million dollars it's the families that participate in the events out of the generosity of their hearts they decide to go ahead and donate those items or donate cash or um, 
franchisees donate door proceeds, but it adds up. Well, you know, if you're listening right now and you're going, what is this show? I've never heard it before. Well, the Thrive Time Show, what we're all about is helping you start and grow a successful business. And my background is I'm the former uh, United States Small Business Administration Entrepreneur of the Year. Shannon was asking, she's like, what is your core business? (laughs) Um, What I do is like, I have have a real estate company, okay, that I'm involved in called Sprick Realty. And we'll sell, (laughs) you know, like uh, like this week we sold three different houses. And so I'll make, you know, four or $5,000 a commission off of that. And then we'll, uh, you know, then like the, the haircut business, elephant in the room things will be going well we have almost 4,000 members there and then it's just all these things that congratulations that, I mean yeah it, it's fun and I will tell you though if you're listening right now this show's all about you and what Shannon and I are, are, are going to attempt to do today is to teach you the five steps that you need to take to start a successful business because I will tell you I am not a college graduate and, and Shannon you are a uh, a somebody who went to college to study elementary education is correct, that correct correct and your husband is a pastor correct and so you didn't have that pedigree. I don't have Mm-mm. that pedigree. Mm-mm. But the first step, the first step, okay, step number one of five is you must sell something. Thrivers, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to emphasize this. I'm going to double down on it. I'm going to get intense about it. You have to sell something. And I'm going to give Agreed. you a notable quotable from Guy Kawasaki. Yes, love him. This is the guy who uh, helped introduce the Apple computer, the Macintosh, as it were, to the world back in 1984. He's also a board member with Wikipedia. He says this, ideas are easy. Implementation is hard. So what you have to do, Thrivers, is you have to find a problem that you think that you can solve. And once you kind of find that problem and you go, okay, I've got a problem. I think I can solve it. I think my product is perfect. I think my service is perfect. You eventually have to go out and attempt to sell it. And it doesn't always go well the first two, 10, 15, 1500 times you attempt to do it. We made lots of mistakes. Now I want to ask you, Shannon, <laughs> for someone who's listening right now sure. who maybe has a widget, a gadget, a service, something in their head, and they go, my idea, I just want to start a business. Um, for their, but, but they're reluctant to start to sell it until it's perfect. Right. What what tips or coaching would you have for them? Uh, probably my first tip was you're going to f- fail through the process. And, oh. that, and I don't I don't want to, you know, scare them. But uh, feel, there will... There that doesn't will, feel very nice. I you're know. Fail? I'm sorry. I just want to set correct expectations. Okay. 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 So there will be things that uh, won't go right. Um, I think it's great to have a plan. Um, and in fact, when I have franchise owners that bring me their ideas for, you know, whatever, um, I hand them their idea back and say, okay, you need to tell me how much this is going to cost. You need to tell me. Basically, you have to think about all of the things um, that it's going to take to start that business um, or execute that idea, as you were saying. Now, I'm going to, if you're a thriver right now, I'm going to try to give you some really specific examples of this. Um, For the elephant in the room, the men's grooming lounge we have, if you're listening right now, check it out. If you go in there and you say, hey, I'm here for my first time haircut. I heard you on uh, the Thrive Time show. Your first haircut's a dollar. It's a dollar. Okay, so one, is it a dollar? You mean like one dollar? Yeah, true. What's the catch? There's not a catch. It's a dollar. Just go into Elephant Elephant in the Room. We have three locations and it's a dollar. Well, how did we come up with that move? Well, here's the deal. We have a membership-based service and we discovered over time that, oh, by the way, when we run a special for a $15 haircut or a $25 haircut or 80% off or 90% off, or all of the things we tried. Shannon, yes. none of them worked. Right. And then we discovered if we just said a dollar for your first haircut, experience it yourself. That would get people in the room. They came in. And you know what? We've converted historically. As of last month, we're a little over 67% conversion of first-time uh, $1 haircuts into a membership. Congratulations. So, but it's taken forever right. to get to that level, yeah. right? So I want to ask you, when you tried to sell the concept of just between friends, Mm -hmm. where did you get that initial pushback? Where was an area where you felt like we just can't figure out how to, was there any point where you felt like you were stuck and you you just couldn't get over that little objection or that hurdle or that barrier as related to selling the concept of just between friends? Well, I will tell you, that I didn't even know what franchising was. Oh, wow. And so that was that was a huge barrier. I learned it from a book called Franchising for Dummies. There really? It really is a book. Yeah, I went out and bought something. But uh, just the, it was barrier after barrier, quite frankly, just um, trying to even understand what franchising and all of the, the legal issues around franchising. But thankfully, I was able to surround myself with smart people. I want to brag on you for a second because franchising, people don't realize 
if you want a franchise, a lot of people say, I want a franchise. It feels good to say that. <laughs> I, I want a franchise. Yeah. But what happens is if you're going to franchise, uh, there's a lot of things you have to do. But one in particular is you have to have this thing called a franchise disclosure document. FDD. An FDD, mm-hmm. yeah. So if you're in the franchise world, everyone's like, so did, did, you, so did you get the FDD? How's your FDD look? Did you get your <laughs> item 19 done? Is it yeah. good? And these are, by the way, $20,000, $15,000 or more expenditures. You have to put money into, you have to invest in building these systems because it's illegal to sell somebody a franchise without yep. that, that documentation. Right. And so the great thing for you, if you're listening right now and you go, I don't know what kind of business I want to own, but I do know I want to buy a Just Between Friends franchise or I want to look into that mm-hmm. or, or, or another franchise, you can feel a little bit protected knowing that Shannon's invested the time and money to build an actual franchise. Yes. And the franchise law sort of protects you as the consumer. Could you talk about how long it took you to go from your idea into building an FDD? How long did that take? Um, so we started praying about it probably in September of 03 mm. um, because the person who told me about franchising made it sound super easy. He said, oh, you just put a contract together, a.k.a. FDD, 200 pages of legal document. Yeah. And um, put an operations manual. Basically, it's a business in a box. So that was his idea of scaling and franchising. And uh, so that's why I went to buy that book, Franchising for Dummies. <laughs> but it, it took, we probably started selling our first franchise in, um, January or February of 04. But remember, I, I don't know that, um, I don't think I've shared this yet, but we helped people get started. And that's, that's a whole now, nother story. Drivers, when we come back, yeah. when we come back, Shannon's going to get into the nitty gritty and the details about how she took her concept and was able to franchise it. And now today she has over 150 locations and she's in Canada. So if you're listening right now, <laughs> you want to stay tuned. She's going to tell you the nitty gritty details of how she went from the idea into the concept of an actual franchise. Stay tuned. This show is brought to you by Adobe Creative Cloud. If you're a photographer, graphic designer, video editor, podcaster, business owner, or just creative genius, this is for you. All of your creative tools, all in one place. Creative Cloud includes the entire collection of creative apps for desktop, from favorites like Adobe Photoshop and Illustrator, to new tools like Adobe Experience Design. Check this out, you can create podcasts seamlessly in high quality with Adobe Audition. Did you miss the exposure or looking to create a stunning and beautiful photo? You gotta download Lightroom, okay? The latest release of Adobe Creative Cloud is here with incredible new features in Adobe Photoshop, Illustrator, and all of your favorite apps, plus millions of Adobe stock assets and new premium images are built right in. So you can turn your brightest ideas into your best work fast. Make sure that you check out Adobe Creative Cloud. It's at adobe.com. Once again, Adobe Creative Cloud at adobe.com. Live, local, now. You're listening to The Thrive Time Show on Talk Radio 1170. All right, Thrive Nation, welcome back to the Thrive Time Show, where we're broadcasting live from the left coast of the Arkansas River within the beautiful Thrive15.com world headquarters and inside the box that rocks. Today, folks, you are in for a treat. We are talking about a subject that we've had hundreds and hundreds, even thousands of people have emailed us this question over and over. They always ask, how do I start a business. Yeah, I love the idea of starting a business. I'm, I'm uh, sufficiently motivated. I want to start a business, but what are the specific steps? And so today we are teaching you the five specific steps that you need to take to start and grow a successful business. And to, and to help do that, we brought on a special guest today, Miss Shannon Wilburn, the founder of the Just Between Friends franchise. She's a living legend and she's an Oklahoma. You're listening to the Thrive Time Show on Talk Radio 1170. Shannon, how are you? I'm doing well, thank you. Now, for people who are just listening, we were, we were, we were talking today about the, the concept of how to start a business, and there's five specific steps we're going to get into today. The first one is you have to sell something. You just have to sell something. So I want to ask you, from the time that you first sold something in your living room to the time that you eventually franchised, how long of a window of time was that, my friend? Okay. From that was from 1997 to 2003, so I think it was six years. Six years. Mm-hmm. 
that we that we grew from a living room to a garage to a church gymnasium to so the if you're fairgrounds. listening right now thrivers there is a, a thing i, I want to call the unicorn and the unicorn is something that we you need to kill in your idea. I love unicorns, and I don't want to up, up, upset the people <laughs> with, with PETA. But you really, yeah. this is something. I mean, I'm just this is a real hot button issue for me. But the thing is, when I started my company called DJ Connection out of my dorm room, from the time I started it in '99 until I received the Entrepreneur of the Year award from the Small Business Administration, that was eight years. Yes. And so you see, Shannon, you've been on what Good Morning America? Is that correct? Yes. Mm-hmm. On the Today Show. Yes. What else have you been on? I mean, CBS Early Show. CBS Early Fox, Show. Fox. You've been on others. You've been on a lot of things. <laughs> yeah. And so now people go, wow, you must have had a, a overnight success. That's, I hear that. And I'm like, yeah, um, 20 Sef- years. It's overnight success. Several all-nighters. <laughs> so, yeah, and several. I think what happens is, Thrivers, you're comparing yourself to, you know, you go to boot camp, Tulsa, you work out in the morning, you see Shannon, you go to Whole Foods, you see Shannon, you go, I want to do what she does. And you can do it. I, I'm telling you, you can. You can, definitely. But this, but this belief in this unicorn that you're going to come up with this great idea, and then 10 minutes later, we, one week later, you're going to be successful. No, I mean, it, it's a process. It doesn't happen typically. And it took Mm-mm. you seven years, really, yes. to get that. Okay, so, mm-hmm. so. And that was just to start franchising i mean what what were yeah. what were you doing during those seven mm-hmm. years were you walking around the desert looking for success i mean <laughs> what were you doing what, what what took so long i was selling advertising so i was doing it part-time okay i was um you know our event our business is event-based and so we would do it once in the spring and once in the fall and in between we would be planning for that we would be talking to customers we would really be telling anyone and everyone so so basically really marketing but not really spending any money, so guerrilla marketing. I want to read this quote to you. I want to hear your feedback on this, okay? okay? This is from Steve Jobs. Okay. And uh, Steve Jobs, if you're, I, I know if you're listening, you know who Steve Jobs is, but he's the co-founder of Apple. But a lot of people don't realize that when George Lucas uh, was going through a divorce, you know the guy that started Star Wars? Mm-hmm. When he was going through a divorce, he said, Steve, could you take over my company? It was called Pixar. Okay. So Steve Jobs is also the guy who launched the Toy Story movie and animation. I didn't and, know this. That's yeah. awesome. So he says this. He says, you can't connect the dots looking forward. You can only connect them looking backward. So you have to trust that the dots will somehow connect in your future. You have to trust in something. Your gut, destiny, life, karma, whatever. What 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 uh, what what do, I guess it, coaching or mentorship advice would you have for someone who's listening who's maybe been two or three years into their business, they're doing it part time, mm-hmm. they have another job, mm-hmm. and they feel like, Am I ever going to get there? What what kind of encouragement would you have for that person? Um, well I you have to look at your business number one and see if it's making money. Uh, so I think that's significant. <laughs> that's not very nice. <laughs> I know, and we didn't make we didn't make money for a long time. Um, so it was it was one of those things we just. I I I I think that I'm different from most entrepreneurs that we this was accidentally done. Okay, and so. Oh. But it takes a while until you because the, th- the thing is, thrivers. I'm just telling you this before you nail it. You, 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 before you scale it, you have to nail it. Again, before you scale it, you have to nail it. So that's I'm just a, that's a great tweet. It's a little move, and I'm just <laughs> telling you, I will, I will just say with, with the DJ business, I would go out and I would DJ for someone's wedding, and I would, I was bringing passion and energy, and I was screwing up weddings. <laughs> and I'd come home, my wife was like, "How was the wedding?" And I'm like, "Everybody left kind of early, you know." Aww. I'm not kidding. And I, w- I would go to a wedding, and I would be like all country crowd, and I didn't have a big country selection. Right. This was back in the CDs yeah. day. I didn't know what I didn't know. Right. But after many shows, I started to figure out, okay, here's the music that works for this crowd. This mm-hmm. is what works for this crowd. By the way, Billy Jean and Rapper's Delight, you can beat match them together. <laughs> this is how I should make announcements. This is what kind of equipment I need. I bought a lot of wrong stuff, but you you fail fast. Right. And you keep failing. Uh, to quote the uh, CEO of IBM back in the day, Thomas Watson, he says, if you want to double your rate of success, double your, your rate, rate of, of failure. failure. Wow. So you just keep moving. Mm-hmm. And you're going and you're going. And then eventually, once you figure out what works... I typically find that's about three to four years later Mm -hmm. for most people. Mm -hmm. And then once you find that out, you move on to step two. Now, step two, Thrivers, is you have to track what works. Okay, so we're calling this start. S is for sell something. Step two is you got to track what works. Shin, why Mm -hmm. do you have to take the time to actually write down stuff when it works? Why can't you just have a verbal tradition? 
Right. This is one of those things that I wish someone would have told me mm. when we started uh, just between friends. Sorry, I was not there. I know. Where was Thrive when I needed it? I believe you. <laughs> Um, in fact, we still, I, I wouldn't say we do a very good job at the, of this still. Mm. Uh, we do a, a much better job than we used to. Uh, but it's it's so much easier to make a business decision if you have the business intelligence to look at. Oh, wow. So let me ask you this. What's, what's, something, like, right, what's something right now that you do, let's say, at your... For your Just, uh, for your just Between Friends sure. fran- franchises, mm-hmm. when they're promoting the events... That just works now. Like, what's the thing that you do that consistently works that you would tell your franchisees to do that maybe you wish you would have had documented years ago? I mean, now if you buy a franchise, it's easy. But back <laughs> in the day, it was kind of hard. What's, what's a move? That- well, I would say that uh, Facebook advertising is something that really works for our franchisees, and that wasn't there all uh-huh. that long ago. Yep. Uh, it wasn't even, I mean, it's, you know, very recent. But that, that really works for us. But another thing that we track kind of on the back end is kind of customer loyalty. Mm. And uh, we just try and figure out, you know, why are people coming back and what's keeping them from coming back? So that's something we have just started tracking and it's such great data. Now, Thrivers, if you want an example of of something that works, um, if you're a Thrive15.com subscriber, it's 19 bucks a month, but some of the stuff we can give to you as an example, I can give you the actual pro forma that we use at Epic Photography, our actual pro forma. So you can see it's a, it's a projected formula of financial success, and I can give you our, our, our scripts. So as an example, if you call Epic Photography today, I recently sold it, so I'm working my way out of that business um, so I can focus more on Thrive 15. and elephant in the room. Oh, I'm excited. <laughs> yeah, but the thing is we have a script that works. Yeah. And it took me a long time before I could turn an inbound phone call into an actual Sale. booking. Yeah, and it was it was brutal because every bride would call and say, "How much do you guys charge?" And I would go, <laughs> "Our prices start at uh, uh, two thousand." And they go, "Okay, thank you. We'll call back." And then I'm like, "Our prices start at fifteen hundred. And they would yes. say, "Thank you. We'll call back." And then over time, I realized, "Okay, I've got to build a system. I've got to build a script." And then once we we uh, refined that, we taught our team how to do it. Stay tuned, Thrivers. We're going to teach you how to build repeatable systems. Up next. <laughs> Are you a business owner? You need to ask yourself right now, how are you backing up your files and important documents? Most businesses have no system for the files in their business. If this is you, you got to use Dropbox. At least sign up for one of their 30-day free trials. Real talk, it's the secure file sharing and storage solution that employees and IT administrators trust. You get as much space as needed at no additional cost. You get unlimited file recovery and versioning, basically creating new versions, and valuable admin controls for secure sharing and collaboration with Dropbox for business. You got to check this out. After using Dropbox, you'll definitely feel more secure knowing that a virus or power surge can't ruin your computer and your entire business. Try full access to Dropbox business for 30 days. Head over to dropbox.com to get started. Again, dropbox.com to get started. listening to the Thrive Time Show on Talk Radio 1170. All right, Thrive Nation, welcome back to your inspiration station. You have found the place on the dial that you want to stick around for a while if you want to start or grow a business. If you want to talk about politics and you want to talk about Rush Limbaugh, then you can just flip to the other guys. But if you want to learn how to get money wise, you have found the right station. My name is Clay Clark. I'm the former SBA Entrepreneur of the Year. And here today, we have... A, 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 she's a, a mompreneur. She's an entrepreneur. She's a fabulous Tulsa. She's a great lady. She's a pastor's wife. Stop. She's a good. Well, thank you. <laughs> I am so excited to have you on because we're talking about the five steps to start a business. Step number one is you got to sell something. That's S. T is you have to track what works. And then if you, if you, once you track what works, Thrivers, you can begin to scale it. Once you nail it, you can scale it. And you now have nailed it to the point where you, you've sold 150 plus Something plus plus franchises. <laughs> okay, so, yeah. so tell me about one of your markets that's on fire right now. One of the cities where they're just on 
fire. Our number one franchise is in Philadelphia. Really? Right now. Mm-hmm. Is that uh, because uh, you're? Uh, what, what what would you attribute that to? Why is Philadelphia just doing the so? The franchise well? owner there is fabulous. She is great with customer service. She's great with communication. She's a fabulous marketer, um, and she works her tail off. And to make, she actually owns four franchises, and they're all top achieving franchises, which is phenomenal. I call these people diligent doers. Um, for those of you who are listening who say, I am not, I'm not into the Bible, don't quote it at me. Fine, I'm going to give you one non-Bible quote, and I'll give you a Bible quote. But, but the <laughs> Bible, uh, that's so controversial. But Proverbs 10.4, it says that God blesses the hand of the diligent, and he punishes the slacker. An old school example would be, mm. if you don't sow seeds, nothing's going to grow. Don't be lazy. So here's the deal. <laughs> I happen to work a lot in the world of franchising, where I help uh, businesses that have a franchise, I help them sell franchises to franchisees so i help sell the franchise to people who want to buy a franchise and what happens is is the diligent doers whenever we whenever i speak at these conferences they're always sitting in the front row they're always taking the notes they're always implementing everything they love the brand they're thankful for the systems they love the systems they have a positive attitude positive attitude <laughs> and then you have the happy hopers who are going why do we have to follow the system? Why do we have to do that? It's like it's like Shannon's like the leader of some, you know, communist cult. Dick, yeah, right. cult or something. Why can't I just go off on my own and go rogue? And I'm going to tell you, if you're listening right now, once you've worked five years, six years, seven years, whatever, to build a system that works. To perfect it. To perfect it. Mm-hmm. it nothing is more frustrating than watching a team member who refuses to implement it. They're wasting money or wasting time when you know you've already tried something like they're trying. And in Philadelphia, it's working because she's working. doing the systems. She, she's fabulous. Now, I know people cannot buy your franchises in many cities because you've already sold them. Correct. What are a, maybe What's a city or a couple of cities that are still available if someone wants to buy your system? So we're in 29 states domestically. Really? Yes. So we have a lot more states available. Oh. And some states, uh, Northwest area, for example, or North, uh, will only take one franchise because the population is not there. But um, mm. So Vegas is one of the places Vegas. where we would love to have a franchise. And all of Canada, English-speaking Canada at least. I have a fun <laughs> little Vegas tie-in for you. Okay. My final speaking event I'm doing. I have one more. Yes. I drop the mic. Done. So we nice. have we have got five kids until January. I just there's just one more, <laughs> okay. and then I'm done. And okay. then and moving forward, Thrivers, if you want to learn to start or grow a business, I'm not coming to you, but you can come to you Tulsa. You can come to Tulsa, the thriving metropolis. There it is. Be here. It's a tourist capital of the world. Yes, it's absolutely. It's unbelievable. Now, here's the deal, Thrivers, is uh, I'm doing a speaking event for the Food and Drug Administration out wow. there. Wow. And you know, Shannon, how many uh, times have you been asked to speak? I mean, I guess not a specific number, but a, a lot. I mean, have you been yeah, asked to yeah. speak? Yeah, mm-hmm. Have you ever reviewed the itinerary and have discovered, uh uh-oh, I'm going to have to change some things? That has happened. So I'm looking at my itinerary. Mm -hmm. This is my final event. I'm going out there. Yes. And I'm realizing I'm speaking to a a, a heavily unionized group. Okay. And my job is to speak to the members of the union who enforce the union code. What are you, what's your topic? These are, these are questions that one would want to know. So, the, the, so they booked me because Yikes. I was a referral from referral. Okay. And they, the idea of having, they go, sounds like Jim Gaffigan from business. It's going to be fun. fun. It's going to be exciting. Yeah. And, and then they booked me, and it's about time management, like how to optimize your schedule. Okay. The tyr- Hear about that. The, the, the great tyranny of time management. <laughs> but then when I'm looking at the agenda, I'm realizing there could not be any more of, a, um, of an ideological – um, opposite right. of myself than this particular group. <laughs> and so I am going to go in there and put on a laser show <laughs> of, of humor and entertainment. And hopefully uh, I've, 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 I've said a bunch of things that are middle of the road enough that I that I hopefully don't that offend they everybody. That hand you a paycheck I, I'm, and say, I'm, good job. Because you want to do a good job, <laughs> but it's just kind of a thing. So anyway, Thrivers, if you're listening right now and you're in the Vegas area, one, you can still or probably Canada. book a ticket to the Food and Drug Administration <laughs> event. And if you're in Canada, you need to be buying yourself a, a Just Between Friends franchise or at least look into it. And if people want to look into buying one of your franchises yes. or maybe they have a sister or a cousin, or somebody they know who wants to buy a franchise, mm-hmm. how can they learn more about your franchise? So if system? you go to our customer-facing site, jbfsale.com, stands for just between friends, um, there is a franchise tab in the top right corner, and that will take you to our franchising website, and it should answer 
hopefully most questions that you have. If not, there's a phone number. Oh, wow. You can call and speak to our development gal. And you guys are still using phones. That's amazing. <laughs> wow. We do. We do. That's <laughs> awesome. Now, here's, here's the deal, Thrivers. I'm going to give you one notable quotable here. It says, the faster you run high-quality experiments, the more likely you'll find scalable, effective growth tactics. Determining the success of a customer acquisition idea is dependent on an effective and uh, an effective tracking and reporting system. So don't start testing until your tracking and reporting system has been implemented. What am I talking about? I'm talking about tracking is so important and nobody has tracked right. and then tracked some more more than Ms. Shannon Wilburn. She has a system that's been proven to work. If you're interested in her company, check it out just between friends. When we come back, we're going to be teaching you step number three. Always be intentional. <laughs> For the professional looking man out there, this is for you. Are you tired of waiting for hours in disorganized barbershops around town? Are you maybe looking for an upscale haircut experience instead of being treated like a little kid? If either of these thoughts crossed your mind, then Elephant in the Room Men's Grooming Lounge is for you. The Elephant in the Room Men's Grooming Lounge is proud to offer a variety of packages and memberships for discerning men and regular customers who wish to maintain their tailored look while receiving discounts off of services and products. They're going to bring you in, they'll offer you a beverage, identify your style that you're going for, get you a tailored haircut from one of the professional stylists, wash your hair, and then style it afterwards so you could even go back to work. The experience is awesome. They even do cool things for members like a free nape shave on Mondays or a peppermint oil scalp massage on Tuesday. Check out one of the locations near you and book an appointment. You can check them out at EITRlounge.com or just dial 918-877-2219. Seriously, you're going to love it. 918-877-2219 or visit EITRlounge.com to book an appointment today. You're listening to The Thrive Time Show on Talk Radio 1170. All right, Thrive Nation, welcome back to the Inspiration Station. This is the place that you go for that audio dojo of mojo. And on the <laughs> on the show today, faux show, we have an miss, an miss, an incredible Miss Shannon Wilburn, the founder of Just Between Friends. Shannon, how's it going? It's going great. I love your intros. Oh well, thank you. Now here's the deal: you, you, my friend, you have uh, a lot of people are going. She has the keys. She has the secrets. She knows how to become successful. A lot of people are listening. They go, I know her. I know people who know her, and I know that she knows the path. And so now we move on to step three of how to start a successful business. You must, A, always be intentional. So start, S-T-A-R-T. S, sell something. T, track what works. A, always be intentional. Why do you have to be intentional about where you spend your time and your money as an entrepreneur? I think because there's not enough time or money. And so you oh have boy. to, <laughs> and that's for any entrepreneur, any business. Let's start with the money thing first. Mm -hmm. So when you want to start a business, talk to me about what you do when there's not enough money. What did you do? Cry. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what was your, I, I'm just saying, because I, I know if I, I, I will tell the Thrivers what I did, but I would like to, I would like to uh, pick your brain first. What did, what did you do? By the way, if you say pick your brain, it sounds so much better. Tap into your brilliance. I want to tap into your brilliance. <laughs> if I could just go ahead and take a second and tap into your brilliance. That's what I'd like to do. Um, so, well, I think you have to figure out, number one, where your revenue is coming from and duplicate that more often, if that's even a possibility. Okay. But are you talking about from like a budgeting standpoint? I, I mean, I can tell you something that we did when we were really in trouble. Yeah, you tell us. Um, 2010, we were, um, we sold a ton of franchises in 2009. Yeah. Um, and we didn't realize, I, I mean, I just, I don't know why I didn't realize, realize this, but we took in a lot of money in 2009. But we didn't realize that to s for franchisees who are starting out, they're not their royalty to corporate, which is what we run our company on, is not significant in the in the very early beginning of their franchise. And right. so we had all these thirty franchises that we sold in two thousand nine that we were having to support in two thousand ten. Yep, and we didn't have the um, employees to support them. We didn't have the money to support them, and it was like okay. 
2010, this is the year of austerity. So basically talked to the small staff that I had, and I was like, don't spend any money unless you have to. Um, and that was, you know, th that can't go on for long periods of time, obviously. Yeah. Um, and do the things that, so we weren't, we were just watching every penny, which I, is what I think most entrepreneurs do in yeah. the very beginning. And I will say this, Thrivers, if you're listening right now and you're going, all right, all right, Kalei, what did, what did you do? What was your <laughs> move? This is what my wife and I did. We lived at uh, uh, 71st and uh, Lewis right there behind the Marriott. Yes. At the Fountain Crest Apartments. Yes. And what I found is if you lived in a bungalow, the bungalow, that's the cheap deal. That was like 625 I think, a month of that right. back in the day. It would probably be like 1000 now, but it's yeah. 625 And we had one car. And so what happened is my wife was a cheerleader at Oral Roberts University, and she worked at Office Depot. Okay. And then I worked at uh, Applebee's, and I worked at uh, the it – was, it's was called West Telecommunications, which is uh, Direct TV. Okay. And then I worked at a company called uh, – uh, you might have heard of this big one – Target. So I'm working at these three places, and the move was is that I had the singular cell phone. Uh huh. Do you remember back in the day where yes. if, I, if I called you, I had a certain number of minutes? Yes. And you I called do. me, but we're it's like, old. And I, I think it was, I think it was like if you called me though, like I could talk to you for as long as I wanted, but if I called you, I couldn't because there's a certain number, right. limited number of minutes. Yes. So my moves that I would do is one, we had the one car. Two, I remember telling Vanessa, we're turning off our air conditioning. This is in Oklahoma right. in the summer. Mm -hmm. We're turning off air conditioning so we can afford ads. So we beefed and up our And you're still yellow married. Yeah, we are. <laughs> and we beefed up our yellow page ads. And then my wife, I would drop her off at Oral Roberts University, or she would walk. And everything that she made, we, we lived on. Mm -hmm. And everything that I made, we spent on lights and sound. And what was so discouraging was that buying one Martin Fogger, which is a fog machine used for events, and like one JBL, it's called an Eon, but buying one speaker would typically set me back two entire weeks of work right. after three jobs. Right. And so and I just worked super, super, super hard to. But you also uh, spent your money smartly. Oh, and it was it was tough. But you know what? I'll say this is that you you just focus on what can we get by without, mm -hmm. which, oh, by the way, once you start to make copious amounts of money. That's also a philosophy you'll, you'll find yourself coming back to because when you buy something, you now have to maintain it, which now gets me into more of the time, the time freedom side of things. Yes. Because once you start to make money and have success, one of the things that happens is, is you're going to start to discover there's, there's three main uh, uh, things that, that, that press your time all the time. There's three things that are they're always trying to take away from your, uh, your, your time freedom, and I'm going to just unpack those for you. One is everyone wants to tap into your brilliance. Yes. Everybody wants to do that. That's one, <laughs> which is a good thing. You want to help. Two is that you have commitments. You have obligations. You're on boards mm -hmm. or you have customers or you, you have family. You're family. a pastor's wife. And then the <laughs> third are the things you've signed up for called mm -hmm. your family. Right. So I'm going to ask you, how have you been intentional or how do you, tr how have you been, how have you uh, maybe gotten better at being intentional as a as a wife and as a mom and as a family, I mean, what where were some moves that you've learned to do to be intentional with your family? Thank you for asking this question because I think it's really important and I think it gets out of whack very quickly. Yeah. <laughs> um, so one of the things that we do in our family is we communicate a lot. Okay. So we try to you know I try and set an expectation for what my week looks like, uh, what my month looks like. We go over our calendars often, so that's one tactic that we use. Another is um, I block out time on the calendar, so I'm still old school old and school. I have the the spiral bound calendar Love it. and I actually take a pencil and draw through, you know, several hours or even a day um, if I feel like I'm not going to be spending enough time with my family or with my husband. And that's one of the things I do. Probably the most effective thing that I've done recently, like in the last two or three years, oh, wow. is um, if I get asked to do something, okay. I talk to my husband about it. Really? I'm, I want to say I do it all the time, but I don't do it all the time because he, he and I both know, and he gets asked to do tons of things too, speaking engagements and such, um, that if you say yes to something, we all have 24 hours in a day. If you say yes to something, it means that you have to say no to something else. And if you're saying no to watching TV or you're saying no to something that really doesn't matter, no big deal. Yeah. But if you have to say no to something and it means you're not going to be seeing your kids that day, or it means that you're not going to be able to work on your business like you really need to work on your business, then you have to really, you have to measure that. And I had a 
probably about three years ago, my executive team actually, they said, Shannon, you need to write down what you're do- where, you're, where you're spending your time. And I spent probably two, three weeks just writing down everything I was doing. And what we found out is I was doing a lot of calls with new business owners trying to mentor them. And, but that wasn't growing my business. Right. And um, I loved it. It was very rewarding for me, but it wasn't um, growing my business. Well, anyone who's listened to this show when we used to be at 5 to 7 and now listening to the show uh, during the daytime, you'll know I talk about it all the time. But it's called the F5s. And I look at it as life. There's a lot of things pulling at you. There's a lot of high pressure, low pressure, like a big tornado, F5. But the, big, the, but the F5s are this. <laughs> Family, finances, fitness, and friendship. And we all mm-hmm. strive to have success in all those faith, family, finance, friendship, fitness. It's, we, we try to have success. But one of the things you have to do is if you don't schedule time for something, it won't happen by default. Correct. And so one of the things that I, I call this the pendulum of power, it's the pendulum of power. You got to, <laughs> you got to look at it. But when you're, when you're first starting oh out gosh. in business, you have to say yes to almost anything to survive. Mm-hmm. So when you first start, you're going, I just want to do uh, any event, anything at all. Uh, yes, yes, Get my yes. name out there. Right. And you find yourself at some weird events, some weird networking things, some weird conference calls. Just you're spending your time doing a lot of weird things in a lot of weird places. <laughs> But then over time, you start to go, okay, we've started to make some power. I can no longer go to that event. And so I had to st- – so I'll give you an example. Mm-hmm. I volunteered for nine years straight at Junior Achievement. Yes. For one day. That's interesting. I spoke at the Junior Achievement thing last week. I'm going to reach over and give you a <laughs> boom right there. So here's the thing is I, I used to do that for every – literally one day a week, I would be there the entire day at the Broken Arrow High School teaching. And I didn't get paid, and I just did it because I love doing it. Yeah. Well, eventually my wife's like – are you aware? I've been tracking, and we have five kids. Are you aware that we have five kids? And I, and I remember kind of going, <laughs> yeah, and I remember, no, seriously, she asked me this. She goes, um, you know, when you finished working with the Broken Arrow kids, do you think you could find time with our kids? Wow. And I'm like, oh, see, that's not a fair question. <laughs> and then you just feel, you know, and then you go into your man. The, the, as a man, what you tip, typically do is you don't communicate. You just hop into a vehicle, a truck, a but car. But at least she said something to you. Oh, and she saved me. Mm-hmm. She did. And if I, I'm just saying, if I would not have had my wife coaching me, matriculating me, uh, pushing me to be the best husband I could be, I know I would have drifted in that area. So if you're listening right now, as an action item, I, uh, it's something I want everyone to do right now if you're listening. I want you to get out a sheet of paper, get out a spiral notebook, get out an Etch-a-Sketch, get out an iPad, get out your phone, get something out that you can write it down on and, and write, out, write out the five Fs. Faith, family, finance, fitness, friendships. Write down the times, the, the, the times that you specifically want to devote to each area because I promise you, if you do not do that, if you're not intentional about doing that, you're not going to just naturally drift to where you want to be. In fact, you're going to find yourself uh, kind of running out of time to do what matters most. Stay tuned. Thrive Time Show. <laughs> Okay, managing your money has not been easier. Mint.com is the solution to ambiguous and blind money management. You can effortlessly create budgets that are easy to stick to or even use one that they make for you. Design budgets that are appropriate for now and put you in position to succeed in the future. Get notifications for weird account charges and receive personalized tips for eliminating fees and saving more money. Check your credit with a free credit score and explore what you can do to improve it to be able to purchase the things that you really want later. Link up the app on your phone and money management on the go has never been easier. You can even link up your portfolio accounts so that you can see your bank accounts and stock values side by side. Mint.com, you gotta go check it out and you can sign up for free. Again, that's mint.com, M-I-N-T dot com. Go sign up right now. It's definitely a game changer for money management. How many percent is left? Broadcasting from the center of the universe, featuring optometrist turned entrepreneur, Dr. Robert Zellner, and US SBA Entrepreneur of the Year, Clay Clark. 
This is the Thrive Time Show on Talk Radio 1170. All right, Thrive Nation, Green Country, Oklahomies, welcome back to the box that rocks. Where we're broadcasting from the left coast of the Arkansas River, deep within the bowels of the Thrive15.com world headquarters. My name is Clay Clark. I'm the SBA Entrepreneur of the Year. I'm the uh, co-host with the Mo Oast, and typically I am joined here with Dr. Robert Zellner. He's the entrepreneur trapped inside an optometrist's body <laughs> but he is somewhere between vegas and minnesota and guatemala right now not really sure where he is but he'll be back here soon but now you get me you, but i'll tell you this we we today <laughs> you, you you what you do is is as is, is, is a uh, radio host guy you say i want every show to be the best show i want this show to be better than yesterday's show and so you don't want to just have randos on the show you don't want to have just <laughs> random people i'm glad i'm not a rando no and we brought on a lady today who can get it done a lady who's getting it done a lady who knows how to start a business and so today's topic is the five steps to starting a business and we we, we could have nobody better than miss shannon wilburn the founder of just between friends co-founder shannon, co-founder, co-founder yeah talk to me about co-founder who co-founder founded it with you. Yeah. My uh, business partner when we started in my living room in 1997 was Devin Tackett. Devin? Is, is it Devin a lady or a Devin dude? Devin is a lady. And how do you know Devin? She was a friend from church. Wow. Yeah. And so she now, we reorgan. you know, we started a second company in 2003 and now in 2011 we, re- we reorganized. So she owns one company and I own another. What is the other company? Well, the it's the Tulsa franchise oh, okay. of Just Between Friends. And then I own Just Between Friends franchise system. So she sells children's and maternity items, toys and baby equipment that are gently used. And I sell and support franchises. Now, Thrivers, if you're listening right now, we're talking about the start system, okay? The five steps to starting a successful business. Step number one, you have to attempt to sell something. Once you have your idea in your brain and your cranium, you must go out there and try to sell it to the marketplace. Step two, track what works. Step three, always be intentional with your time and with your money. You have to do it. Now, Shannon, I have a a horrible, horrible story, and I know that we're not married, but you tell me (laughs) how you would react to this if this was your if this was your life. Okay. Role play. Let's do it. So here we go. Um, is I started this company called DJ Connection, Mm -hmm. and the company is just growing, and people go, I loved your show. We'd like to book you for our next for, for next year's holiday party. Right. Hey, and by the way, I saw you, and could you do my daughter's wedding? It's on a Sunday. It's in July. Uh, there's a Christmas Eve party we have next next year. Could you do that? I and can I, see this happening. And I look up, and there's two, and no, no exaggeration, 200 and more than 260 books, booked events. That means 260 nights I'm gone. Wow. In one year. Wow. How would you process that, or as the Canadians say, you're, you're, for your Canadian franchise owners, process? How would you process that as a as a wife if you're married to a man bear pig who's committed to 260 days that you know about already for the next year i would ask him where he was going to fit me in okay see and this are these are the questions that my wife was asking i'm like and i remember i i remember in a fit of rage i, I shouldn't have done it thrivers i tell you these things so that you will not do them do not <laughs> do this but i said i remember saying to my wife i go I will DJ until I'm 95 years old. I will die as a, I love DJ. Do you will not stop me? <laughs> like, I, like she was standing in your way. No, cause she kept saying like, she goes, maybe, maybe could you not do that one? And I loved it so much. Right. And I, it, it became. It's hard a, to hear it when you want to do something and your spouse thinks that it might not be a good idea. Cause I remember when no mm. one would book me at all. Yeah. I remember when I was like begging people going, Please book me for anything. I swear, I'll do your bunko parties. I will DJ your <laughs> bunko parties. I specialize. And so oh. let me ask you, I'm flipping it to you now. Mm-hmm. As you've grown the business, when did you kind of look up and go, oh, okay, I got things a little bit out of whack. Maybe I'm a little bit overbooked. Or have you ever been overbooked? I mean, have you always done really a good job at time management? No, I overbook myself all the time. Okay. And my husband is the first to notice because I won't be happy Shannon, joy-filled Shannon. I will be stressed out Shannon. <laughs> you kind of come in, kind of just, kinda, hey, what's going on? He's like, you, you sound like you lost your voice. No, you kind of have that kind of like, like a trollish Grinch kind of I know attitude. I need to make a change when he says, is everything okay? That mm. means... Now, Thrivers, I'm going to read this. I'm going to read this to you. This is a, a notable quotable that I, I uh, you know, this is something I, I think you all, we all should know here, okay? Is that, work with me, Thrivers, Okay. Nothing gets done unless it is scheduled. Now, this is Lee Cockerell, the man who used to run Walt Disney World Resorts. He says, nothing gets done unless it's scheduled. Now, that that includes time with kids. 
That includes time at the gym. That includes time at work. That includes time with... And so if you're listening to a show about business, you probably have a bias towards liking to do work. And you, we, got, we have to find time for all these different areas. And right. so for you with, with, with fitness, do you still do the boot camps in the morning? I do. I love it. What time do you do that thing? I leave my house at 4.45 in the morning. And you go to boot camp, Tulsa? I do. And that's a Coach JC's Coach program. Coach JC, I love it. I go Monday, Wednesday, Friday when I'm in town. Somebody's listening and they're going, that sounds crazy. I've never been up that early. How could you possibly? <laughs> go ahead and give us a commercial. Why do you like it? Um, I love it because it feels like family. I'm able to get my workout done first thing in the morning. It's a great workout. Um, I love the people and you know I love the workout. And the coach is awesome too. How many hours Coaches. of sleep do you need per night? It's great if I can get seven. Seven's what you seven what you need. How do we get to measure what we need? I mean, <laughs> I'm not, and, I, and I, I mean this in a professionally appropriate way. Yeah. Uh, I don't know how old you are. I'm not going to ask, but you, you're yeah. looking like you're stuck at 27. Yeah, I'm 44. Okay. I'm 46. Ah! <laughs> so you're, but you're always you're always looking young and youthful. But you sleep about seven hours a night. Yeah. So let me get mm-hmm. into this. What time do you try to go to sleep? Probably about. 10. It's so going to be at 10. 30. Mm-hmm. You get up about 5. I get up at 4.20. Four t- uh, just Monday, Wednesday, Friday. I don't do it every day. I you probably set, should. But you set your alarm for 4.20? 4.20. And mm-hmm. what time do you have to be at boot camp? 5.15 is when things start. But I like to get early and say hello to people. Now, do you have, <laughs> I'm trying to teach the Thrivers some moves, some practical sure. moves you can apply. Um, my wife and I, I have phone time on yeah. and phone time off. So I take my phone yes. down. So as an example, um, like Saturday um, mm-hmm. or or from uh, Wednesday, the Wednesday before Thanksgiving until Monday morning after Thanksgiving. So Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, my phone was off. Um, I, I cannot. That's very good. That's my move because I used to do the deal. I'd go out to eat with my wife. Yeah. And then it's like, boop, boop. Yeah. And I look and then I'm like. And then emotionally, I travel to wherever the issue is. Right, right. So now I'm on the phone with somebody who's running one of my, our businesses and going, Gary, I'm telling you, we got to fix this problem. Gary, come on. You know, and then I'm like, I, it takes me out of that, that dinner mode I was in. Yep. How do you do it? How do you manage the phone and the email and the text and the Facebook and the Twitter and the whole, all these forms of communication? How do you do it? So, well, I... I will say that I'm a workaholic okay. and it's probably by choice. Both of my yeah. kids are in college. Uh, my husband works very hard. I work very hard, but we do find time. We do schedule time together um, and I'm totally fine and he's totally fine. If we're sitting in the same room, he's studying the Bible and I'm answering email or dealing with something. But one of the things that we do is like, I know that um, it doesn't honor him if I'm spending time with him and I am trying to also work. <laughs> now, I know this about you because I don't know you that well personally yet, but I do know a lot of people who speak highly of you, and I know that well, you likewise. do. Well, likewise. Well, I do know that I hear you, you do put an emphasis on the family, and I know that you've been a great mom and a great wife. Are you perfect? No, who no. is? <laughs> but for someone listening right now mm-hmm. who feels like they can't start a successful business because they're a mom. Right. What feedback, what advice... I don't have enough estrogen think- <laughs> to comment on this. What what feedback do you have? Well, I think uh, being a woman, it sometimes is maybe a little bit more difficult because we have expectations of having dinner on the table and, um, you know, being the person who's going to take kids to school and pick kids up from school. And, and maybe that's not for everyone listening, but that what, that was how it is in my, that's how it is in my family. And, um, so we, we just had to communicate often about it and set realistic expectations with your kids too. Um, I remember when I work out of my home still, okay. and when my kids were little, um, they, I remember this specifically, I was on a, um, an interview, I think with the New York times or something like that. And my kids got home from school and yeah. they're like, Hey mom, hey, mom you know? what's going on? <laughs> and I'm trying I can't to find <laughs> my pants. Where are my pants? I had the door closed to my office, and then of course they come knocking, and so Where anyway. Are my pants, mom? <laughs> so I had to sit down and say, you know what? Um, unless you're bleeding, if there's a note on the door that says "Do not knock," I'll be out. You know, and I gave them a time. This is when they were a little bit older, so it just it's setting those expectations. You'd said something that was powerful, and I want to talk about this when we come back as well, but expectations, Mm -hmm. um, people put expectations on you, Yes. and so I'm going to um, uh, share with you right now some of the things that that are expectations that maybe I have for my life that other people are not comfortable with. Okay. 
I do not like getting together with groups of people. Okay. So, so I like to get like entrepreneurs. I get them. Yes. So like I, I get how hard you've worked. So even though I don't know you that well, I go, I get you. So I know that like, you know, 60 hour work week could be normal for you or right. 70. Right. And adversity, who hasn't been through it? Right. So I'm always fascinated to go, well, I wonder what kind of adversities Shannon's gone through. Mm-hmm. I really struggle with people who aren't entrepreneurs sometimes because I've been an entrepreneur. I've been self-employed since I was 16 years old. So right. since, since I'm 16, like this is how I've done, done I it. I feel guilty about feeling that way, by the way. And I don't mean to. <laughs> I'm just saying it's so like yeah. I, but the expectations is people will say a lot of times like, hey, do you want to come to this party or this event? And I'm going, um, well, between Dr. Z and I, there's close to 600 employees. And frankly, no, I don't. I just want to stay at, at home with my chickens. Yes. Because I like chickens. I had that texting conversation and email conversation with a girlfriend this week. Really? Because she wants to get six of us together to go to New York City in the spring or in the fall. And I'm already looking at my schedule going, if I do that with you, I'm going to have to say no to my family. <laughs> and I would just tell you this. And Not I know, that I don't like them. Well, in your, in your, in your life, um, you know, your, your family, um, your, I think it was your father, he had uh-huh. muscular sclerosis. He had multiple sclerosis. Multiple sclerosis. Yep. Mm-hmm. And my uh, my father recently passed away from uh, Lou Gehrig's disease. Wow, I'm sorry. And I know what it's like when you lose somebody. Right. And when you lose somebody, you typically look up and go, am I spending my time where I want to? Right. Am I happy with you the way my life's going? a different perspective. And so I'm just encouraging you right now, Thrivers, think about where you're headed with your life. Think about where you're going. And we come back, we're going we're to kind of help you steer in, in the direction that you want to go. I'm not going to put my values and my goals on you. I'm just going to ask you the, the question rhetorically, are you going where you want to go? Or are you drifting where everyone else wants you to go hmm. by default? Thrive Time Show. This show's episode is brought to you by Moz.com. If you have ever considered the World Wide Web as a viable strategy for your business, you got to check out this tool. Online marketing is complicated, but Moz Software makes it easy. Companies like 99designs, Otterbox, and Aaron's, they all use Moz because it works. Explore organic search keywords for your business, research Bing and Google search results for your targeted keywords, and link up Moz Local and Google My Business. Seriously, this tool is crazy powerful with the clarity it brings to online marketing for your business. Even if you're just curious, start a 30-day trial with Moz.com today. It's a game changer for your business. Moz.com, M-O-Z.com. Listening to the Thrive Time Show on Talk Radio 1170. All right, Thrive Nation, welcome back to the Thrive Time Show, Tulsa's only local business radio show, and the place that you go for your daily audio. It's like a self help library. You know, you could be listening to politics, you could be getting all worked up about who the new Secretary of Defense is. Half of you are listening going, yes! The other half are going, it's the end of the world. Some of you are going, they need to do a recount. He can't be our president. Some of you are like, he's our president, let it go. Either way, you have chosen to not listen to a political show today. You've chosen to listen to a a proactive self-help show. And typically the show features myself. My name is Clay Clark. I'm the SBA Entrepreneur of the Year, the father of five human kids. (laughs) Many chickens, that kind of thing. And uh, uh, my wife is incredible, and I am a man bear pig. She's if you're, beautiful, If you're too. on Facebook Live, you will discover I'm a man bear pig, and I know that she can't see me, and that's how we <laughs> st- I, I was able to trick her. But today, we have we, uh, Dr. Zellner cannot be here today. He's out expanding his vast entrepreneurial empire somewhere between Guatemala, uh, Minneapolis, and Las Vegas, I've been told. And so we brought in the big guns today. We brought in a lady who's a mompreneur. <laughs> She is a, a really, and I say a mompreneur. The, the challenges, and I mean this sincerely, the challenges of being a mom, just, just the things moms go through, the, 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 the support system that moms are, and then to become an entrepreneur, you take a mom, you take an entrepreneur, you put it together, psh, it's a mompreneur. It's a rare It's a rare thing. I want to know who made that term up. I don't, I don't know. Someone smarter than me, but I'm going to tell you this. It's just women. It's a, it's a harder life. You just the the emotional needs of your kids and what you do for the family and being able to do that and start a business. I salute you, Miss Shannon. How are you? I'm doing well. For anybody who doesn't salute me, that's awesome. For anyone who doesn't know what your business is all about, <laughs> can you explain to the to the Thrive Nation what Just Between Friends is? What this business model? Sure, are? I'll tell you. The concept um, is a twice yearly children's and maternity 
consignment pop-up event. So our franchisees are event planners. They rent a large space like a fairgrounds or a um, like 20,000 square feet to 50,000 square feet and set up a temporary pop-up store for gently used children's and maternity clothes, toys, and baby equipment. But that's not what I do. I sell those concepts. How I'm many, the franchisor. How many people come to a typical event that maybe one of your franchisees will host? Um, well, it depends on the age of the entity. I learned that terminology recently. Let's say Philadelphia. If I live in Philadelphia, oh, what probably your... 20,000 to their Wh- event. What? Mm-hmm. 15 to 20,000. 20, 15 to 20,000 mm-hmm. shoppers, shoppers mm-hmm. are coming to these events. Well, not all of them. That's our largest one. The one in Philadelphia though. Yes. That's the one the big in Philadelphia one. is the big one. What Tulsa. about the one in Tulsa? Yeah, probably 12,000. Wow. Probably over the course of a week. So if somebody wants to earn time and financial freedom and they want to buy one of your franchises as a means to get there. Yes. Obviously, they have to go through a process. Obviously, we have to send them a franchise disclosure document. Correct. Which they have to have for almost a couple weeks. 14 to look days. At, 14 days <laughs> to look at to make sure it's the right fit for them. But if someone wants to take the first step, how can they learn more about your franchise? So they can go on the website. Um, we have jbfsale.com okay. and there's a franchise tab that will take you to another website. And I won't make you remember that one, but just click on the tab. There's um, oh, tons and tons of pages, tons of information, videos from current franchise owners that talk to you about what the concept is about and what it takes. So we tried to answer all those questions. Now we're teaching you today, Thriver, specifically how to start a successful business, Mm -hmm. S-T-A-R-T. We find ourselves on step three, always be intentional. And I'm going to read a notable quotable that was, uh, you actually said in the Huffington Post. What did I say? Was it good? Well, you've been featured in a lot of media (laughs) publications. So I was kind of trolling on the internet, but this is what uh, we we found here. It says, you must be intentional in all you do. The first step is saying no to things. There are only 24 hours in a day. Mm -hmm. So when you say yes, you must acknowledge what you're going to give up to do that. I plan time to be with family or friends and literally mark it in the calendar. Make sure you set your goals and then plan your tasks and time to support the goals. Right. Um, talk for the, somebody who's listening right now who's struggling to find time to work on their business. Mm-hmm. What advice would you have? How did, how did you find time to start your business while holding down another job? Um, so that's actually, this is a good thing. We I actually stopped being a franchisee okay because i felt like i was working in the business too much and i felt like i was ignoring franchise the the franchisees who were paying me and so um that's why we had to do the reorganization i'm just very focused on the franchise system and helping them so i think first is acknowledging that um you need to have a plan and that you i think have a vision for your company have a plan and look at those objectives that will get you to that plan. Now, Thrivers, if you're listening, I, I uh, uh, my wife and I, we go to a church called The Met, which is 10 miles north of downtown. It's on Apache. And uh, uh, Mert, Merton there, he is actually the praise and worship leader. And he is just phenomenal. He's like a John Legend meets uh, Christian gospel. It's just awesome. But we, <laughs> we go to this church and I, and I will say it always starts at 9 a.m. on Sunday. You know, that's the time we go. And so because we're there at 9 uh, our bodies are there, our minds are there, our phones are off, and we enter into the presence of worship. For those of you who are not Christian believers, you might not understand what I'm saying, but it's like a concert. You're there, you're not doing it's anything awesome. else. You're, you're totally <laughs> engaged in that moment. Mm-hmm. I think what happens, though, is a lot of times as a self-employed person, we don't have the discipline. We choose not to have the discipline needed to block I don't always time. have it. <laughs> so here's what I do, and this is, this, I'm just, it's weird, but I'm just telling you what I do. There's I'm taking notes. There's two different kinds of time. One time is called meta time, which uh, the Greeks, uh, the word uh, meta comes from the Greek word meaning above or beyond. But the concept is that um, meta is like there's there's time in your schedule. You just have to work above and beyond the emotional reactive aspects of the day. And then there is like I would call it alpha time or get it done time. That's where you have to just get stuff done. So as an example. Every day, for sure, when I come to the office between Dr. Z and I, there's about 600 employees. I swear to you, every single day, there will be what I call a crime against humanity. Every day. <laughs> I know what you're talking about. Somebody's going to do something crazy. Yeah. They're gonna, someone's going to call in and go, I feel sick. And you go, you, so are you okay? <laughs> I, you know, I just tell you, I'm totally sick. I can just need to take today off. I'll be okay, though. Just thanks a lot, boss. And then they'll think the phone is hung up. 
And then they'll go, it's awesome. We can go now. He doesn't even know. And then you'll go, hey, you're on speakerphone. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I was just, anyway, it happens all the time. People steal. People, I can tell you, about once every month, someone steals something. Because there's 600 people running around. Right. And so, I mean, it's just a thing. And so what happens is I can't think a deep thought or a, a meta thought during that day. I cannot do it. So I like to get up typically about 4 a.m. And for between 4 and 9, that's when I kind of do those things. And so people say, well, how did you have time to write six books? I don't. I have to say no to things. You got to block out time. And so if you're listening right now and you want to start a business, I can tell you that although Shannon's been great at a great many things, she's not an inventor of time. You didn't just create 27 hours in your day. You still had 24. I I love how you did that early in the morning. Is yeah. that your time? I, but the thing is, I don't, I don't like the morning. I really yeah. don't. But the thing is, is that like I have five kids mm-hmm. and I want to be a, a, a therefore I want to be a great dad. Right. And so I built this thing called the man cave, but before mm-hmm. the man cave, it was called the bathtub, <laughs> but no one comes into the bathtub. Yeah. No one comes into the man cave, the man cave, Sam helped put this thing together. No one comes in the man cave. It's a beautiful thing. It creates the daily dojo of mojo that I need to kind of get going. Yeah. But if you're listening right now, I want you to go ahead and write down where is the place and when is the time that you can start to work on, on your business, business and not just in it. Mm-hmm. And for somebody that might be your truck, it might be out there amongst the chickens. It could be in the woods. It could be at the park. But you've got to find a time to work on the business and not just in the business. Stay tuned for Step 4 Thrive Time Show. Right now, how are you taking credit card payments for your business? It's never been faster or easier to begin taking credit card payments for your business than with Square. You know the little white square that plugs into your phone's headphone jack? It's awesome. This payment app is great for businesses such as food trucks, beauty salons, and retail shops. The users receive a small portable card reader that they can attach to a phone or other mobile device to take fast and convenient payments. The way it works is that it subtracts 2.75% of every time a card is run and it does it automatically. So if you sell a sandwich for $20, you'll see a net gain of $19.45 in your bank account the next day. If you enter the card by hand, it costs 3.5% plus 15 cents on top of that. They encrypt everything so you know you're secure. They make it super clear to start and even offer bonuses for sharing with friends. So you can learn more at squareup.com. It's free to download and works on all devices and operating systems. So make sure that you go visit squareup.com. Listening to the Thrive Time Show on Talk Radio 1170. All right, Thrive Nation, welcome back to the Thrive Time Show. This is your place that you go to learn how to start or grow a successful business. My name is Clay Clark. I am the former SBA Entrepreneur of the Year, sent here on a mission to teach you how to start and grow a business. And today we brought on a guru, a wizard, a mompreneur, <laughs> a, a wonderful wife, a great American, <laughs> a beautiful human. It's Miss Shannon Wilburn. Stop, How are you? Stop. <laughs> All right. Now, you started just between friends. Yes. And when we, uh, before we went to the break, we were talking about uh, the step number four or step number three. You have to be uh, intentional with your time. And I just want to share one uh, kind of additional anecdotal example of this. The Give guy, us a story. The guy who started the spin class. Mm-hmm. You, know, you know the spin yeah, class? Yeah. That phenomenon? Yes. His name was Johnny G. Johnny G. Yeah, and, and so our, our Thrive team at Thrive15.com, if you go up there, you can watch these exclusive videos we've shot with him. So our whole crew, we, we pull up to his house, and he lives in, um, what, where does Oprah live? It's in, it's in, it's in California. It's, it's, it's going to come to me. It's, uh, You're Bar- asking me, Barbara, I don't know. Santa Barbara, Santa Barbara. Okay. It's very wealthy, very high That's what I was going to say. Thank you. So, <laughs> so he, so he we, we pull up to his property, and the video guys, you, they, they, you know, they're they're casual dudes, right? And they're going, bro. Where do you want to set up the lights, bro? Where do you want to set up the gear, man? What do you want? You know, the whole video crew's going in, and you can hear this, bum bum, bing 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 bing, bum bum, bing bing bing, whoa whoa whoa, and it's like this un, this undertone of whoa whoa, and then you hear yes. bing bum, bing bing bing. Well, he has this like daily meditative yeah. thing he does where he prays and he 
aligns his thoughts and he writes on his to-do list yes. for the day. He does this every day. Okay. I picked up this move from him. So the guys, I guess they they are walking onto the set and it's like his quiet time and they don't realize that Homie is like making eye contact with him. <laughs> And so they look through the bamboo and then like all the, the, the palm trees and yes. stuff and he makes eye contact and he is not super happy. Yeah. That they're like, bro, what do you want to do, bro? We're going to set the lights, bro. And he's having his meta time. Right. So afterwards I talked to him. I said, what were you doing? And he goes, he's from South Africa. Okay. But he explains, he goes, oh, I was just having my, my meta time. You know, I, I plan my day and I just try to be alone. And I found that there's certain uh, thoughts. Like if you go to, to a, like a, if you listen to a scary movie, there's certain soundtracks that are scary right. that'll make you scared even before you see anything visually. Where it's like, ring, ring, ring. Yes. And there's there's music that... That, motiv- that provide the anxiety. That's right. And mm-hmm. there's music, music that motivates you. Where there's right. also music that's great for reading and thinking. And so I kind of learned that from him and now that's kind of a move I've, I've, I've stolen. But Thrivers, we're moving on to step number four, which is relentlessly pursue your goals. Now, Shannon, you, uh, you witnessed your dad... Um, right. Go through a, 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 a just a terrible right. disease. Can you explain he what, what he went through? Yeah, sure. Um, he was CFO of an oil and gas company at the age of 33. So he had moved up in the ranks of his business very quickly. And then he started having symptoms of a neuromuscular disease called multiple sclerosis and was diagnosed with that. And he went from a cane to a walker to a wheelchair in the span of six weeks and then went on disability insurance. And my mom, actually, who had put him through college to get that high paying job went to work and she didn't have a degree and she had done yeah so what anyway did you, what did you learn about relentlessness from your mom and her her energy and her fight to provide for your family so my mom's awesome my dad was awesome too he's since passed but um she is just, she's a very hard worker and she told me at some point um she said Chana, you just don't get to quit that's not, don't even, don't think that you can quit. And she modeled that for us. And she modeled a lot of stuff. She was um, very good with sales and creating relationships and stretching a dollar. And so I don't think I realized all of that until I started my company, everything that she taught me. And I feel very privileged. And she, she was actually the one who gave me the idea to start the business. But your, your mom is relentless. You're relentless. How much of that does that relentlessness uh, uh, I mean, could you be successful in where you are today if you didn't have that hustle that your mom no, taught you? Or no, <laughs> there's no way. Well, kind of a lighter story mm-hmm. here. My my kids noticed I have the hustle, so we went to Woodland you do Hills. have the hustle. We went I to agree. Wo- we went to Woodland Hills Mall, and I my wife says we want to do family photos. Yes, and I'm just telling you, I'm I'm probably everyone listening. You're going, you're a horrible husband, <laughs> but this is what I do. My wife says we're gonna do family photos, and I'm not wearing a sweater that matches everybody else. I'm not doing it. I'm not. Er. I'm not walking through the woods and taking a photo of like, this is us. We're walking through the woods. I'm not doing it. I'm going to wear a sweatshirt that means something to me. So I went to the, so I went and I had my own sweatshirt embroidered. So it says, go Pats. That's Patriots. And it says, do your job. And I was committed. I'm going to have, buy it and have it totally embroidered and have it done previous to the photos. Okay. And so your I, wife knows about this? Yeah. yeah. And okay. so I go in and she's had to learn to cope. Right. It's a coping thing. <laughs> But I'll go into the to the place, the mall that does it, and they go, I'm sorry, our guy, he can't do it today. He was supposed to be here at noon, and I was planning on it. And I said, right. what do you mean you can't do it? He goes, we can't do it. He's not going to be here till noon. I said, okay, fine. So I go over to Lids, and, okay. I, and Lids will embroider stuff on your head. Right. And I said, Holmes, if I pay you like 50 bucks, will you go over and run their machine and put it on my thing? And he's nice. like, uh, well, yeah, man, I, I'll do it. And so I took a guy from one store, brought him over to the other store, and he got that embroidered. Boom. I got it done. Well, then I thought I was, my, my, my daughter goes, Dad, that's the hustle. That's the hustle, man. That's the hustle. Well, then this I is go, your daughter that said this? Yeah. Nice. And then I go upstairs, and there's a guy who's got a bigger hustle than me. He's selling that, that, that shoe cleaner stuff. Yes. One of those kiosks. Uh-huh. And this guy's like, hey, sir, do you want me to clean those shoes? Sir, let me, let me, let me change those shoes. <laughs> And I'm like, I don't know. And he goes, no, sir, if you're not happy, you don't owe me anything. And he starts just cleaning my yeah, shoes at the yeah. mall. Did you buy and something? I'm, oh, I did. Absolutely. Because mm-hmm. I wanted to applaud with my yes, money. Yes. But I'm saying, that, I asked the guy, I said, how many units do you sell a day? Mm-hmm. He goes, oh, I'm selling it, like, you know, about 150 units a day. Wow. I'm like, what? And this guy is sweating. Yeah. But if you've ever been to New York City uh-huh. and you've seen the street vendors yes, and, that, and that hustle, and you compare that to maybe the pace of like a Tulsa-based 
Subway <laughs> sandwich where it's just kind of a slower pace. Somewhere in there, you've got to get that hustle as an entrepreneur. You've got to do it. you got to get that drive. Mm-hmm. And I'm just telling you, Thrivers, if you're listening right now, nothing will happen if you don't bring that relentlessness Amen. and that energy to your business. Now, Reach Thrivers, it. when we come back, we're going to teach you step number five, which is how to train yourself and how to train your team. you got to train yourself and your team. Thrive Time Show. Are you looking to start or grow a business? Then you are definitely going to have problems and questions along the way. You will find the answers to all of your business questions at thrive15.com. Thrive15.com provides online video-based business training taught by millionaires and successful entrepreneurs for less than a dollar per day. That's less than your daily coffee budget. It's no classrooms, no get rich quick seminars. These are trainings broken into 15 minute segments that get you the answers that you need. It's business school without the BS. I dare you to try a seven day free trial. Simply go to thrive15.com and the first 100 people will also receive a free downloadable for how to optimize your website. So stop wasting your time and money. Go to thrive15.com and get your business questions answered now. You're listening to the Thrive Time Show on Talk Radio 1170. All right, Green Country, Oklahomies, welcome back. In fact, you are listening to the Thrive Time Show on your afternoon. See, this is the thing where you're, you typically, you've said, this is, this is, isn't this normally, wait a minute, this is the time where I normally listen to politics and I talk about immigration and inflation and Hillary Clinton and some sort of allegations against <laughs> Mr. Trump. But now it's like self-help? They're in, they're and, investing in themselves today. What is this? In themselves. And, well, Thrivers, we're so honored to be here today with you. My name is Clay Clark, and I'm the co-host of the Thrive Time Show. Typically, Dr. Robert Zellner's here with us, and we have always have a, a very special guest. But because he's out expanding his vast entrepreneurial empire today, we needed somebody who could take the place of both Z and a guest. And so we had to bring on the the guru, the mompreneur. It's Miss Shannon Wilburn. Miss Shannon, how Yay, are you? I'm doing great. Thank you for having me. This is fun. I don't know that I can replace Dr. Z though. He's pretty good. Well, if you're <laughs> if you're around Dr. Z, you will discover a man who is an optometrist, but he wears a soccer jersey every day now. Does he? Because he can. That's interesting. And so he's just he's a guy. He's it, a, I'll try, I'll try that. You might want to do that move. You might want to do that move. <laughs> now, Thrivers, we're talking about the five steps to start a successful business. And step number four we just talked about was rel- was relentlessly pursue your goals. Now, step five is you must train yourself and your team. <laughs> Shannon, once you started to have some success yes. with Just Between Friends, mm-hmm. when did you realize, oh boy, I'm going to now need to be able to teach other people how to do this if I want to grow it beyond where it is? I mean, when did, when did that become uh, a thing for you? We, we started realizing my biggest limiting factor is my ability to train other people. That was when I had the pain point. I think that was when the idea for the franchise system came to me is when I was just overwhelmed with helping uh, people figure out how to do what I was doing. Yeah. And that's a whole nother story. Yeah. Uh, but when someone said, you need a franchise and put do this business in a box and you need to write an operations manual. And if you write it down, then they'll have the instructions and they can duplicate um, what you are Drivers, she just said an operations manual. And if for somebody who goes, blah, 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 here's the, if you work at Starbucks or Target or anywhere, they give you these operations manuals, mm-hmm. these, these systems. It's how to duplicate success. That's right. And yes. I'm telling you, it requires a ton of time to make them. Right. And it's ever changing. Always changing. Mm-hmm. I mean, the elephant in the room, we changed our dress code. I know because I'm the one who did it. Right. I know we have changed that at least 17 times. 17? Yeah. And I know because wow. it's on version 17 of right, it. Right, right. Now we're almost done, but it was a deal where we thought one thing, then we thought mm-hmm. something else, mm-hmm. then we just have, you just have to change it. Now, Thrivers, if you're listening right now, I want to give you some mystic statistics uh, from Tom Corley. He's the guy who's the founder of the Rich Habits Institute, which Dave Ramsey's always talking about. It's on his website, Dave Ramsey's website. But I'm going to give you some statistics that will blow your mind so you'll have more appreciation for what uh, Miss Shannon has built here. <laughs> of wealthy people maintain a to-do list. I have a to-do list. Versus 19% (laughs) of poor people. Wow. Now, if if you're listening right now and you grew up how I grew up, you might go, I don't need a to-do list. That's the point. That's the only way I can sleep at night. 
Yeah. You, you, <laughs> otherwise, you just... All, all yes. That, am I forgetting something? Yes. Now, the next is 88% of wealthy people read 30 minutes or more each day for education or career reasons versus 2% of the poor. Now, let me qualify. Online reading counts? Let me, let me qualify because okay. this, is, this is a big thing. Okay. Ongoing education. When I say reading, this is what the statistics says, but yeah. if you kind of read into the book, he talks about this. Entrepreneurs go to seminars for like days. Oh my gosh. They go to workshops. I they didn't w- know we were going to talk about this today. Yeah, go for it. And I keep, um, I keep my name tags, you know, the lanyards with your name tag when you go to those things. I keep those as souvenirs and I have them hanging in my office yeah. and I have a lot a of lot. them. And I was thinking, man, that that's a lot of time and effort, but oh, it is so valuable and it's expensive to go to those things, but it is so valuable and it just gives you great ROI. And Thrivers, listen to this. 88% of wealthy read 30 minutes or more each day versus 2% of the poor versus two. Wow. 2%, 88% of wealthy believe in lifelong education versus 5% of the poor. This is a, it, it, Bam. I mean, if you're listening right now and you're going, <laughs> what do I need to do? You need to commit to ongoing education. It has to be a decision. You have to do it. Now, Shannon, Mm -hmm. you said in one of your interviews that was in the Huffington Post, you said to quote my franchise attorney, the best franchisers could teach kindergarten. And while I didn't teach kindergarten, I did teach fifth grade. What did you mean by that? Uh, What did she mean by you could teach kindergarten? I think it is that you have to be able to, you have to be relatable. You have to be able to... um, with the staff especially model how to do the job uh before they do it and um i i think i think your ability to to duplicate right if you're not careful because you're so in it you end up to uh you almost retard your growth Mm -hmm. because you are so into the jargon and the knowledge and the intricacies that it's almost hard for you I, i call it the curse of knowledge but it's almost hard to teach somebody else how to do it. Well, and they don't know the terminology. That's right. Right. And so you have and to... And we've all been in that place where someone's saying something and we have no idea what they're saying, but we act like we do. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> now, Thrivers, I'm going to give you three ways today that you can begin to change your life in a profound way. There's, there's a three ways that you can begin to change your life in a profound way. One is if you go to thrive15.com and you go up there and they go, what's Thrive15.com? What is it? I don't, I don't even know. Well, Thrive15.com is the world's best online business school. Well, why is it called 15? Well, we did research um, years and years ago. We found that the, the cognitive load of the average person is about 15 minutes. Meaning the average person, it's hard to pay attention or to learn more than about 15 minutes at a time. As an example, when you drove to work today, what happened? I don't remember. That's what I'm talking about. What did your What did your last professor talk about? I don't know. It's because cognitively you weren't present. You were just going through the routine and the habits. And so the idea is 15 minutes a day, you want to think deeply about your life. Just 15 minutes a day. If you can do just 15 minutes a day, I'm telling you, things will change. But go to thrive15.com, the world's best business school, and you can sign up for it's $19 a month. However, this just in, if you're in the military or you're a veteran, active reserve where you're married to someone who is it's free for free yes and check it out if you don't have $19 a month that's between you and God and the IRS but if you don't have $19 a month and you go I only have four dollars four dollars a month and someone else goes I have $19 a month but I prefer to spend it on other things like Red Bull then the thing is (laughs) you can still do Thrive 15 for it you can set your own price what yes you can set your own price the second you could book a thrive15.com workshop where, by the way, we have gurus that speak. We teach you how to grow a, a successful company. They're two days. They're 15 hours. They're, they're seven and a half hours a day. Why not 15 hours in one day? Because you couldn't handle it. It's like a fire hose of knowledge you don't get in college. It's unbelievable. And the third option is you could sign up for one-on-one mentorship, all at thrive15.com. We have it there for you. Or, and I'm just a little bonus, this is bonus move number four, you could look into a Just Between Friends franchise. <laughs> and what kind of person should look into buying one of your franchises? Who should do it? Uh, well, most of our franchise owners are moms. Moms? But these are people who'd like to make extra income, work from home. Uh, they, they have a little bit of business experience, maybe. They're outgoing. They, they're good at creating relationships. What, but someone who's listening who says... Well, what do I need to know to qualify to buy one of these businesses? I mean, what kind of person qualifies? 
Are you want you're <laughs> wanting knowledge? Wow! I just got the sneezes. <laughs> Bless you. Yeah. Whoa! <laughs> unbelievable hours at this time of year, Thrivers. You uh, are you wanting knowledge? Are you wanting? Um, I mean, does somebody have to? What kind of person would not qualify to buy your business? So, what kind of person would qualify? Is it kind of a credit score thing? How much yeah, money does to, it cost to get started? Yeah. So the franchise fee is fourteen thousand nine hundred. Wow. But, but That's a pretty it's it's deal. a low income um, investment and probably between thirty five and forty two thousand dollars to get started. Brag on the most successful franchise that you have. Where are they located? In Philadelphia. And what makes Ms. her or him so successful? Mm-hmm. She's a great marketer. Okay. She's great at relationships and she's great at communication. Uh, she just does a fab. She's a, she's definitely driven. She's yeah. a doer. Uh, she does what she says she she's going to do. Who should not look into buying a franchise? Who should not be doing this? Lazy, who should, who, who, is, who is a Just Between Friends franchise <laughs> uh, not for? Um, people who don't want to work hard. I think our franchisees make it look easy. So um, so pe- sometimes people look at our concept because they think, it's an event-based business and they won't have to work hard, but that's definitely not the case. We try to set the expectation early on that you, you have to work hard. Any business, you have to work hard. Work? It sounds so weird. I don't I know, know if Bernie Sanders would approve. Wait a minute. This is not a political show. Sorry. Now, I want to ask you this. If someone wants to get a hold of you or, or find out more about your business, what yep. is your website? JBFSale.com. Stands for Just Between Friends. JBFSale.com. Now, Thrivers, I'm telling you what, we're always honored to have great, great, great guests on the show, Oklahomies, people who know what they're doing, but are right here, they're local, they, they, they just know what they're doing. Oklahomies, absolutely. <laughs> and so on tomorrow's show, you're going to want to tune in because we have Greg Wright with Capital Assets. Now, who's Greg Wright? Um, this is a guy who's the head of a company that owns many apartment complexes. If you've ever wanted to invest in real estate, if you've ever wanted to learn how to raise capital, you want to listen to tomorrow's show because Greg, he puts on a laser show when it comes to raising capital, <laughs> when it comes to managing real estate. He owns a lot of the properties we have right here in Green Country. And as always, Thrivers, three, two, one, boom.